Hi everybody, my name is Jason, and that's it. And I am going to be presenting you with another today's episode of Yahoo and the Torah. And thank you very, very much. We know that your time is very valuable. We know that there's a zillion other things you could be doing. We know that you could be doing everything other than this. And this for us and our family is one of the most important things ever that you can do. It is what will keep a family together. It is what will stabilize a family. And it is what will... Well, it's what it will put us in the good graces of our Creator. And that is more important than anything, is that we abide in Him, that we keep His laws, statutes, and commands, that we have the faith in Messiah, Yahushua, and that we are on the kingdom road. And today we're having cow issues, and so we will not get the rest of the tribe, but I am here to get this going today. And again, I appreciate your time, and you guys are our digital family. We've mentioned this before, we've said it before, and... For sure, you guys are um, an extension of our family. We don't have a tremendous amount of family out there. All of our family in the States have given up on us. They think we're crazy conspiracy theorists, and they uh, they want nothing to do with Yah or his Torah or anything like that. And since we have separated ourselves from the rest of the world in every way, shape, and form, then we are, um, this is where we are. So thank you guys very much for sticking with us today. We really appreciate it. Let us begin when we actually are breaking into a brand new book today, we are breaking into the book of Leviticus. And so we have made it through Genesis. We've made it through Exodus. So we are two-fifths of the way through, and we will begin with this. And so this is it, Leviticus 1. And Yahuwah called unto Moshe and spoke unto him out of the tabernacle of the assembly, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto Yahuwah, Ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. If his offering be an ascending smoke sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male. Sorry, I'm doing two at the same time with two, two nubs here. Let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah. And he shall put uh, his hand upon the head of the ascending smoke offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before Yahuwah and priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And he shall flay the assembly ascending, he shall flay the ascending smoke offering and cut it into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts of the head and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. But his inward and his legs shall he wash in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be an ascending smoke sacrifice, an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep, or of the goats, for an ascending smoke sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before Yahuwah, and the priests, Aaron's son, shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. And he shall cut it into pieces with his head and his fat, and the priests shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water, and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a sending smoke sacrifice, an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahuwah. So I think this is important to note that the sacrifices that we are that we were providing back in Leviticus. Now, these sacrifices obviously we cannot do today because we do not have a Levitical priesthood, and and we've seen in Genesis and Exodus, the, the ceremonial side that they have to do. And the priests all have garments with bells on them that if they do something wrong or they go into the temple on cling or they are not cling themselves somehow, that they die, right? This is the holy of holies to Yah. And so when we are offering up sweet fragrance, the problem with sacrifice is that we are not obedient to our creator. If we were obedient to our creator, then we wouldn't need to offer up sacrifices. But since the man, the heart of man is exceedingly dark and, you know, it, it's every vile thing in the world comes forth from the man's heart. And so when we are appeasing our creator, we're, we're, that's simply all it is, right? It's not, a, it's not a forgiveness of sins back in the Levitical days. It was an appeasing. 
The forgiveness of sins came from Messiah Yahushua when he became that ultimate blood sacrifice as well as our Melchizedek priest. So when we have a Melchizedek priest such as the high priest Messiah Yahushua, that's all we need. And so it is by him being our priest and him being also our, our lamb sacrifice that these our sins are able to be forgiven. But our sins are not able to be forgiven so that we can wash, rinse, and repeat all of the same sins over and over and over. This is not a this is not a watch pornography free card, right? When you're watching pornography, you're committing adultery. You're breaking your mind. It physically changes the way that you think and, and your your mind is changed with that simple act. So it is not something that we're like, well, you can do that and then say, you know, I am sorry, and, you know, in, in a prayer to Yah and, and, you know, plead the blood of Messiah Yahushua and then continue on in this, right? We are to change our ways. We absolutely need to be a cling mirror of ourselves. The reflection that we see in this mirror needs to be a cling pure soul from our creator. Anything outside of that is, is not correct. And so when we are, when they were in verse 13, when they were making that ascending smoke sacrifice offering by fire, it's basically appeasing our creator. And if we're billions of miles away from our creator spinning around, you know, whatever they say, like 66,000 miles an hour and, and different things like that, I don't know how our creator would ever smell the smoke offering that was coming up from that. I believe that we are in some sort of a dome that when the smoke offering came up, that the smoke offering would, um, he could smell it. And that is what appeases him. And it's probably like when you walk into a kitchen, you smell cinnamon rolls or something of that, that nature. And that is, it, it smells good. And so you're appeased. So 14. And if the ascending smoke sacrifice for his offering to Yahuwah be of fowls, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar and wring off his head and burn it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part of the, by the place of the ashes. So this is interesting as well. So we are literally removing the feathers. So he wants to remove the feathers and you throw them inside the ash pit, which is, it, it's stuff is long gone, right? That's the stuff that you, you won't, it's not part of it at all. Um, it's to be tossed out, right, outside the, the city gates. 17. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is an ascending smoke sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. Okay, so that is it, basically. What we ended up here is with the burnt offerings, and we, uh, this is it. So we have, um one of the very first offerings that we have and this one is called the burnt offering and in leviticus 2 we learn about another type of offering but this was prior to messiah yahushua this was the only way that you would have atonement for sin right and over and over and over in the bible it says our creator does did not want this right he only did this so that he could tolerate the people of yashrael and the people of yashrael you know the people that said they were god's chosen people they didn't keep the commandments. They, they, you know, right immediately, right afterwards, they, um, they began and uh, they built a golden calf, right? They built a golden calf. They, they said, this is our Elohim. Moshe didn't even get down off of the mount. And um, they had already corrupted themselves as a people. They, they created a God of gold, a, a lowercase G, an Elohim of it. And um, it's wrong, right? There's one Elohim most high. And that is who we need to worship. We do not want to worship. There's Elohims of this world, right? There's Satan and everyone else. He's an Elohim. Man is called an Elohim in the Bible as well. So there are many other Elohims out there. And we do not have any other Elohim but the, the one who's, who's the, the creator, right? There is, no, there is no Elohim in wood. There's no Elohim in any of this stuff. All of these little Buddha, you know, things that we get and, and, and the things that people worship and fall down and worship, there's no life in them. And so if there's no life in them, why would we want to worship something that has no life? So we need to make sure that we are completely in sync with our creator. We need to make sure that the mirror that we are looking at ourselves daily with doesn't have spots. It doesn't have problems. It doesn't have, um, it's not broken, right? It must be a cling mirror. And that is how our souls must be. If we want to inherit the kingdom of, of heaven, of Shaimaim, then the kingdom of Shimaim is, is for innocence. It's for people who are like our creator, who are built in righteousness. 
And we don't all come from righteousness. I didn't come from righteousness. I am probably the greatest sinner among all of you. I am the one who needs the Torah and the blood of Messiah, who shall probably more than anyone. And so there's no sainthood in this house or within this collective or anywhere near this. We have our problems just like every other family that is out there. We argue, we bicker, um, we, we have issues. We, we have a lot of issues and we have dogs at bark as well. Sorry about that. And with those issues comes, we break a lot of the Torah. We have unclean spirits that will pollute the, the boys and myself and Nicole and everyone. You can feel them. You can see them. And you have, to, you have to repent and you have to unbind what has been bound to us. And that is one of the main reasons I do not like Christians to pray for us. People are like, oh, oh Jason, you're just a heretic. I'll pray for you. Now I'm like, no, please, please don't. Um, you know, you're not praying to the same Elohim that I do. And so I don't want to be cursed by whatever Elohim it is. And I believe the curses come on us. I believe the evil darkness comes upon us. And, you know, in the end times, Revelation talks about how that Satan goes to war against those who keep the Torah. Like we are the targets of Satan. He hates Torah keepers. He hates those who will put their lives in order to go towards our creator. And if we are going anywhere else other than this or our priorities are incorrect we are going to be like the the foolish virgins that did not have their oil filled and we're not going to be ready when messiah yahushua comes and when he comes we do not know but we need to have the courage and the strength to endure till the end so with that guys i am going to wrap up um my family's off they're doing a ton of stuff so we unfortunately couldn't have them here today but we will try again um, tomorrow, if, if it is possible by the will of Yah that we are able to do this. And if not, then you will have just DJ Jason here. And I am happy to uh, DJ this with you guys and read this with you guys. And our, our hearts and love goes out to all of you guys. Everybody who makes comments on this channel, thank you guys so much for being a part of this channel. And uh, we love you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm out.